I'm spending the evening at Ferrari Land at Porta Ventura World in Spain, home to Europe's tallest and fastest roller coaster, Red Force. I'll be aiming to ride this legendary coaster in the dark, as well as exploring other attractions and theming. So let's drop into Ferrari Land. So it might not be dark, but there is a lovely early evening glow to the air. The sun has almost completely gone down. It's just a very nice dusky vibe right now. And there it is, the tallest roller coaster in Europe, Red Force, manufactured by Intamin. Over 300 feet in the sky. But it is kind of the one hit wonder of this park. Because while there are other attractions here, if there was no red force, I think there would be very little custom. I think this is the this is the star attraction and everything else is has got a very filler vibe to it, if I'm honest. But when they do do theming, it's pretty tasty. This recreation of Italy is really nicely put together. But we'll come back to that soon because first, red force. So the queue near the entrance said this was a 50 minute wait. There's not actually any queue times on that one. But it doesn't look too bad. So I've just entered the most pointless single rider line in the world where you have to queue through two big cattle pens in a main queue just to access a single rider to get past this little bit. So a fun dusk ride there on Red Force. The acceleration really does have so much power to it. Not quite in the same way that the hydraulic launches do, but it's still, it's a fierce launch. The top hat gives so much airtime, and it's just, it, it does rattle a bit towards the end. Here it comes. I mean, did you see how quick that went past me? Um, really cool as the sun's going down as well. It's, uh, it's a really fun ride. It's obviously it's short and sweet. The top hat gives you a massive pop of air time. You get air time again as you come down the drop. I think this is a really good attraction and one of those that you can just do over and over again. Of course, if the queue allows, and that is one of the frustrations. It is quite a long queue there. They have a single rider line, but you can't actually access it until you've gone through two big cattle pen sections of queue. So you stand in 30 minutes plus of queue before you can access the single rider. So you don't really get any benefit from it, which is a shame. So uh, it's getting quite late now. So there's about 45 minutes of park time left. So I'm going to a bit of a wander around, show you some of the other, other attractions here. I'm not sure how many of them I'm going to get to ride, but it does seem to be emptying out quite a bit. So I haven't checked queue time since I've been on Red Force, but my feeling is they've come down quite a bit. So let's go and explore. So we do have the two thrill towers there. One is a standard drop tower, the other is a shot and drop. Uh, both pretty fun, but nothing too spectacular. Oops, he looks like he's broken down. I'm kind of surprised they don't have any kind of up lighting or anything on Red Force. It, it gets quite dark as it disappears up into the sky there. It is actually quite dark around. You know, it's quite minimal lighting. Around here, it does feel slightly devoid of atmosphere. This is where you have a few of the, uh, the sort of kiddie rides. There's a little drop tower there. Sort of plane ride here. And of course, you will see lots of flashy Ferraris dotted around on display. So Ferrari Land is quite a small park. It's very much a second gate in my opinion, rather than a standalone park. It doesn't really have the attractions here um, to sort of keep you here for a full day. But if you come into Port Ventura, it's like an extra 10 or 12 euros to add this on. So you absolutely may as well come in for a couple of hours, do the key rides here, see some pretty cool theming. So let's go and have a wander around Italy now where we have all this really cool um, architecture and these awesome building facades. <clears throat> they do have singing and dancing shows out in this plaza section here. And the fountain is not in operation, it's SBNO. So look, this is all really nice around here. It is 
like being back at Ferrari World, but actually outdoors and slightly more Italian. So this is their um, Italian restaurant. And if you go through this sneaky Ferrari sign here, uh, this guy on my left here is not safe for work, by the way. Cover your eyes, kids. But sneakily hiding under this Ferrari logo, they have their junior championship driving license. Which seems to be out of the way of everything else. And as you continue around the side of Italy, you sort of come back to the front of the park again and this big Ferrari building. So housed inside here, we have two dark rides. Um, let's go in and have a look, shall we? So housing here, you have two dark rides. You've got uh, Racing Legends, which is a sort of 3D, 4D cinema type thing, and then Flying Dreams, which is a flying cinema. I've got this, neither of them are that fantastic. Pole position over there is uh, an upcharge attraction where you can drive a car in front of loads of screens and that sort of thing. They also have that at Ferrari World too, over in Abu Dhabi. And then you've got Pit Lane, which is a eatery and they're very expensive Ferrari merchandise store. So let's go and have a squiz around here. So this uh, Ferrari logo t-shirt is quite funky, but did you catch the price? 130 euros, that's madness. I'm a bit of a trainer guy, so I can't help having a look at the Ferrari Pumas. And even the Red Force t-shirts are 50 euros. I mean, when you compare that to the prices in the main park where most t-shirts were less than 20 euros, it's a, quite a sharp increase, isn't it? Well, the queue times have come right down now, so I might sneak in another ride on Red Force. So you have walkways that go all across this uh, Maranello circuit. So you can get views all around it. And in here we have the Ferrari gallery, complete with numerous vehicles on display. I'll have a very quick look around because I've, I've been found here a few times before. They also have a scale model of Ferrari Land, which is really cool. I always have to stop buying kind of a look in awe at this. I mean, this would be quite awesome in your house, wouldn't it? I'll add it to the animatronic dinosaurs. Well, I certainly got my dark ride on Red Force on that occasion. Absolutely pitch black over that top hat. And quite chilly as well. It's definitely a bit of a uh, bit of an evening chill in the air now. It's reached sort of quarter to ten. But yeah, that's really good. Got a back row ride there as well, just for the added bonus. So yeah, a really fun couple of hours here at Ferrari Land this evening. It's uh, it is a limited park. There's no denying that. It's certainly not somewhere where you'd just come and spend the day here because you'd get bored quite quickly, I think. But Red Force is certainly worth it. Um, as a tack on to Port Aventura, which is a massive and fantastic park next door, totally worth doing. So the final thing to show you is up here, they do have a grandstand overlooking the launch section. So you can sit in one of these seats like a spectator, wait for someone to throw hot dogs at you. And I sit here and watch Red Force. They also have an incredibly low definition screen there just in case you want to watch it as if you were watching a stream on your computer in 2016 or something. So that's all for my evening here from a very Red Force heavy Ferrari land here in Spain. It is a nice little park, it's well put together, it's well presented, it just needs a couple more attractions to really beef up the ride lineup. But uh, I don't think it's going to come anytime soon. But thanks for watching. There's a full Port Aventura vlog up on the screen now, so you can go and watch that if you'd like. And I will catch you next time here on Loop Theme Park Adventures.